YouTubers, what's happening? I wasn't going to do this video and then decided I would because it's been a while since I made one and maybe it'll help somebody out. I'm working on a uh, 2004 Mazda 3. It's got the 2.3 liter uh, dual overhead cam. I think the 2.0s and 2.5s are similar and the Mazdas and Fords of you know, all that lineage. Uh, so this is my buddy's car. He drove it home, overheated it. Uh, we're assuming the head, the head, at a minimum, the head gasket is blown. Uh, we may have problems with the head. Uh, he drove it for a while. Could have problems with the block. I don't know. Um, tearing it down so far hasn't been so bad. I'll tell you a couple things I got stuck on and, and ways to get around it. Um, if you're a pretty decent shade tree mechanic, you can at least get it torn down and see what you're working with. Um, it takes you know a variety of all kinds of hand tools and whatnot, uh, all sizes of sockets, you know quarter drive through through half inch stuff and uh, maybe even three quarters i'll get to that in a second but you know on the, on the top end up here it's it is basically just taking your time you know removing fuel lines removing a ton of electrical connectors i've taken videos to remind myself you know what went where uh, how many connectors i undid things like that i'm trying to keep things laid out in order over here uh, and, and under the car as well um, one thing that I, I got stuck on momentarily up here was this hose that goes into the intake manifold. Uh, to get it out, you don't need any special tools, but you do need to take a screwdriver and you press down on, on this ring right here. And it doesn't move very much, but it's, it's just enough, you can see it, it's just enough to let that come out. And that's all that was. You can press around other areas on it, but it's that top ring right there that will let that come out. Uh, that stymied me for a little while. Uh, the fuel lines, uh, you don't need a special tool, just undo that blue clip and it, it pulls right off of, uh, well, off the, uh, uh, into, I'm sorry, off the throttle body, which I have disconnected. Um, you see there's fuel here in this bag I've got tied over the end of it. Uh, I'll explain why that happened in a second. Uh, the rest of this is fairly normal stuff. When you go to take your battery box out, it looks like the, the car's computer is on the inside of the battery box. So you, you're going to have to take that off of the box to get the box out. Uh, that was a surprise to me. I've never run into that before. Um, all this other stuff is fairly basic. Um, you can see I've got the valve or head cover off. I guess it's the valve cover, if you will. Um, no big surprises there, just a bunch of 8mm bolts. There's a cover that goes over the exhaust. Uh, was no problem to get off. The exhaust itself is loose from the head uh, and was really no problem. All these studs came right out. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, no problem at all. Um, and here you can see the uh, all the timing stuff which on this car looks in pretty good shape but it's got 150,000 miles on it so we might replace all that anyway. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there that will walk you through how to time these motors. Um, I will show you very briefly if you look here, this is the number one cylinder right here. And if you look, this is the intake cam and this is the exhaust cam. And the lobes for each are pointing almost at each other, right? And that's that's a sign that you're on at least the compression stroke. Uh, I'm probably not at top dead center here, but I'm pretty close. When you go to time this up, uh, there will be a tool that comes with uh, your, your timing set if you buy it or you can buy the tool separately. And you can see here on the back of the cams, if I can focus in on it, the back of the cams, they have a groove here, and then there's a groove also on this one over here. Uh, it's like basically a piece of flat stock that inserts into these grooves on both cams and it locks them together flat. And that's how you know the cams are at uh, top dead center position. And then, timing cover is off so you can see um, in here right back here uh, is well I'll try to get some light on it. right there where my finger is is the uh, I think it's the counterweight counterweight for the crank um, that there you can see it that squarish piece right there where the end of my uh, drop light is pointing uh, that is needs to be in that position right there because that says that the the piston is at least towards the, the close to top dead center. Uh, 
there is a bolt that runs through. I don't know if you can see it here, kind of where my finger is here. Yep, right there. There's a bolt right there that you have to take out. There you can see it. You take that bolt out and you put another, it's, it's a timing bolt. You put that in there and it extends into the crankcase and it makes contact with that counterweight when it's in the right position. And, you know, I'm not going to do that on this video. I don't even have the parts and stuff. You can look that up in other videos. Uh, that's the basics of how to make sure the crank is in time with the cams. Uh, it's weird because the when the pulley is off of the crankshaft, this gear right here that the timing chain is on, it can freewheel around the crankshaft right now. It's not a keyed, it's not a, a keyed cranking gear. Uh, so that means that, that crank could spin, that chain would stay still, and your cams would come up here and spin, and everything would be all out of time. Uh, and that's essential to get everything locked in when you're putting this back together so you have everything in the correct timing. Um, the, the other biggest problem that I had getting this car apart was getting that bolt out of the crankshaft. Um, this guy right here. Uh, clearly your pulley is going to be on here. Get it stabbed up on here. So you can see kind of what I'm talking about. Okay, so before you take your timing cover off, your pulley will be on here. And this uh, bolt will be in the, the end of your crank holding everything on. Also holding friction of the bolt against the pulley, against the timing gear against the crankshaft and that friction of that bolt is the only thing that connects that crankshaft uh, timing wise to the top end of the motor through the through the timing chain. I've never seen a motor like it but that's how they did these. Uh, getting this bolt loose was a beast. Um, I took a short video of how we did it which was based off some other YouTube videos which is basically you put a 21 millimeter socket on here put a half inch breaker bar down here uh, on the ground um, and I used the cheater pipe on the end of the breaker bar to make it long enough and then so you wedge that against the ground and then you bump the engine with the starter and that acts as a great big old impact and it loosened that bolt right up uh, and I had used uh, my of course my uh, battery powered stuff battery powered impacts I'd used um, a three-quarter inch setup with a long cheater bar on it the, the trick is trying to hold this pulley I had metal bars wedged in there it was just bending the bars um, so, but the trick is pretty slick and I'll, I'll post it up next right after this. Um, so that, that was definitely a sticking point for a couple days till we figured that out. And, um, all of this was caused by the water pump, which sits right here, which is a $30 part, um, on this car, uh, it's right here. Uh, this thing was, it just stopped. It, it doesn't move freely. Uh, it is notchy and I'm sure when it got hot it just stopped spinning and it threw the belt off and oh boy kept driving the car and here we are so anyway uh, it's just just a quick breakdown of what I got going on so if you got any questions I'll try to help out there are tons of other resources out there and if you're doing this good luck